Kazuko's story is a story of love, conservation and community. And that's exactly why we were founded where we were founded. To create jobs, to educate and to build a unique safari destination. Welcome to Kazuko Lodge. Thank you. Kazuko is a reserve which is in the Eastern Cape province. It's in the Karoo biome. The kind of animals that we've got on the reserve is obviously the big five, lion, leopard, elephant, rhino, buffalo. And then along with that, we've got endangered species like the blue cranes, um, which is our national bird, and then also Cape Mountain zebra. And then a lot of kudu, uh, steenbuck, diker, um, all sorts of other antelope as well. And then we've also got uh, endangered species uh, cheetah, and then uh, a lot of bird life as well. Activities that we do do is uh, early morning game drive, afternoon game drive, and then different types of walks in between the, the game drives as well. The first game arrived at Kazuko in 2001, and the project was launched in 2008 by Archbishop Desmond Tutu. And in attendance was um, Professor Jake Scherrell. He was advisor to Nelson Mandela. So the key question at the time was, can you take degraded land, rehabilitate it, rewild it, fence it, and then reintroduce big game, and that they would breed. There was just no literature out there, there was no, no other project that had done this, so it was pretty risky. And then to put a, a five-star lodge on it and use an ecotourism kind of model to bring tourists in. The first objective was social impact. Can we uh, hire disadvantaged kids from our communities? Can we train them? Uh, can we create real jobs for them? And will, will we be able to attract tourists to come? We started buying land about 18 years ago. It took about three and a half years to, to buy 22 farms, 40,000 acres of land. It took another year and a half to fence about 75 kilometers of elephant-proof fencing and then took another two years to, to build a lodge and get it open. We've grown over the past decade from a team of, of about 30. We've grown to 64 permanent positions. And through these positions, we have impacted 64 families and some more families because each person here earning a salary really supports three or four or five as much as seven families in town. They may be the only breadwinner for that. Thank you for calling Kazuko Lodge. Sina speaking, how can I assist you? Being part of, of a project like Kazuko really touches your heart. You know, I think, I think that's why I'm, I'm here. I actually was out of the industry for about almost um, eight years. And what brought us back here was the, the vision, conservation together with communities. And, and through that, do poverty upliftment. My name is Elton, and I'm a duty manager at Kuzuko. Uh, I'm here going now for seven years. Uh, I've actually started here in the restaurant, <laughs> and then uh, from there I've become restaurant manager, and uh, I've worked my way up. <laughs> When I went to the local grocery store to do um, some shopping, and he would always ask me, don't I have a job for him? And he joined the team as a driver. He's come through the ranks amazingly. He went through restaurant, restaurant manager, and then stock controller, and currently he's our procurement manager, and he's actually being trained as food and beverage manager. some coffee and tea. He's got small children in town. His wife has joined the team as well. And um, we've been able to, to walk a, a road with him. 
and currently he is our director on our Workers' Trust. The Workers' Trust, that's basically like a, a pension fund for, for the staff because uh, that's money that you get once you retire or once you resign here, yeah, then at least you have something for yourself to say, listen, I've worked <laughs> and now I have some money maybe to start your own business or buy a house. Really, it has been for me a great pleasure and a great experience being here at Kuzuko. I've grown so much as a person and also for my family, because if I haven't had this job, I couldn't have provided for them. So it's also something for them. Very rewarding being part of this initiative where you're not only empowering people to do a job, but you're actually impacting their whole lives and their families. So the second objective was conservation. So there we're engaged with two activities. One is reforestation in, in areas that have got bad erosion. We are replanting an indigenous shrub that is eaten by the animals, uh, but also is created capturing carbon. So this shrub is called spagworm. So that's a great shrub, and, and so we are doing conservation work around that. You know, it's, it's going to be quite a long process. Um, one of the things that we do do is also um, rehabilitation of overgrazed areas. So where the previous farmers that used to be in the area farming with angora goats and sheep, they did um, overgraze the land quite, quite a lot. Um, so one of the things that we do is we cut spackworm and then we plant them in particular areas where they naturally did occur. And then we try and regrow them to stabilize the soil as well. If you look at the terrain at the end, if you look at the kind of mulch oh, yeah. that you get here, this is quite rich. And then the other conservation work is really around the species. So elephants, disease-free buffaloes, Cape Mountain zebras. Uh, these are different to the, the normal big virtual zebras. They're now endangered and we have a population that's being bred up there. With elephants, um, the interesting thing there is that arrow elephants um, were hunted down to almost 13 that were left at, at Addo. And uh, so the population of five, 600 elephants that are there in Addo now has come from this small group of 13 elephants. There's that elephant's tracks on the road. This would be from yesterday afternoon going down to water or coming back up. Animals are so important to conservation uh, because if you have a large herd of elephants walking through um, some of these shrubs, you know, they start, sure they will feed, but they start to break branches off and so on, and these branches start to sort of sprout. So initially we found all these trees that were pushed over and broken, and initial thoughts of people that came here was, oh, look at all the damage the elephants are doing. And then the Nelson Mandela Metropole University started doing research here on the elephants about six years ago. For every tree that the elephants push down, that tree regenerates itself four times. So for biodiversity, for animals that depends on, 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 on elephants for pushing over trees because they find a, a new micro habitat underneath there that, that's working perfectly for us. So what we're doing back at the, at the game park is really to bring you know, this idea back that you actually need these large animals with their dung to fertilize the land and enrich the land for grass to grow. And when the grass grows, then you can bring more animals on. We need animals. We actually need more animals to help uh, with conservation rather than less animals. I think one of the, the, the challenges we have with the conservation approach that we have adopted traditionally has been too siloed. So we think in terms of just conserving, uh, protecting elephants and so on, without taking into consideration the economic situation of the people who are living around the parks. 
Current data suggests that maybe about 10,000 elephants are poached every year in Africa, throughout Africa, and maybe about 3,000 rhinos for ivory and for their horns. The issue about poaching is very simply if people are hungry and they are being offered 10,000 US dollars you know, for uh, an elephant task, you, know, you can understand why they, they, they would want to do that. You see it in so many historic projects that people were wanting to create these conservation areas and you get the surrounding communities thinking it's for the rich and the glamorous, it's not for them. So you don't get the support and they will far easier give information out to poachers and enemies of conservation because they don't feel part and partial of it. But we've reversed that totally around. We went looking for an area where jobs were needed. Land rehabilitation was needed. And my view is that if people are hungry, they will shoot your elephants. And they will chop your trees down. And so unless we address the hunger issue, unless we bring them in to become stakeholders uh, in this conservation exercise, you, we're never going to win this. So we brought the two together to create a self-sustainable, profitable business to be able to look after the communities surrounding the lodge and also giving them shares in this project so that they feel that it's theirs and that you can impact into their future generations. My own view about business is to try and create environments for human flourishing where everyone can develop their full potential.